I just released a new mobile game with my team called Void Pet Dungeon, and it is out on iOS and Android because we chose to make it in React Native. The inspiration for this came from playing AFK Journey and Honkai and some other sketchier games. And we wanted to see if we could take our 2D emotion monsters and create a simpler version of those style of games. And also could we pull it off in React Native, mostly because I didn't have any experience with a game engine and I kind of didn't feel like learning one. One big thing going for our game is we chose to make it turn-based. There's no way you're making a good real-time game using React Native, but if you're building chess or something like that where you press a button and an animation plays, then React Native can kind of get it done. We also kind of tested out whether this would even be possible by creating a little bit of a game in our mental health app called Void Pet Garden, where you're kind of doing a 1v1 kind of Pokemon style battle. And we were like, okay, this kind of works. Now, before we talk coding, I got to plug our book. My co-founder, Linda, just wrote a Void Pet book called Hands of Greed, which is a 400 page fantasy book based in the world of Void Pet. I'm incredibly biased, but I mostly read fantasy, and out of the 51 books that I have read recently, recently being maybe in the last 15 years, this is my second favorite book. So go to handsofgreed.com and you can learn more. Okay, tech time. After you complete the tutorial and make it to floor 10 in Void Pet Dungeon, your main screen is going to look something like this. All the icons, all the backgrounds, and even the pets are all SVGs. And these are SVGs made in Figma because my co-founder Linda is a Figma wizard. I recommend getting one of those. It makes your life so much easier and makes everything look awesome. And then the basics are you pick a cool font, you put a bunch of colors, and it looks more like a game and less like Facebook.com when you do that. Okay, my pet's going a little crazy. Let me get like a, yeah, let me switch him out just for the sake of, you're not supposed to see that yet. Okay, there we go. This is a milder pet for you. This is lonely. Next, we have that bouncing chest, the daily boss, which here's a nice big version of him. And if I go to training, enter all these bosses right here. We have, uh, I think, 12 or 11 bosses. They're animated using Rive, drawn in Figma. We do a bunch of idle animations, but you can also do active ones with Rive. So if I tap on this chest, you can see it opens. I get my rewards, awesome. If you wanna animate a character or anything, Rive is very nice and I would recommend it if you can do what you wanna do given their SDK. We almost converted all of our pet animations to Rive, but we just hit a hard blank where we can't actually change the colors of the SVGs or the paths using Rive. It's kind of hard coded, which was a little bit sad. So we left them to be SVGs and they kind of do this little wiggle thing by interpolating interpolating between two SVGs. And I have another video where I go more into depth of how we do that. Believe it or not, the little particles floating downward, so Void Pet Dungeon is a kind of winter-based game, that's why that's there, are using Lottie and not Rive, mainly because I found a snow animation really easy with Lottie and I didn't find one with Rive. And now that I think about it, I probably need to replace it because it doesn't work on Android. Like if you create, you, if you play this game on Android, you probably won't see the snow particles. And by probably, I mean you won't. We did create some higher form pets and we just said, with these higher forms, you can't change the color. And so those, we we made those using Rive and those came out really good. And as I click around, you'll notice we just use modals, bottom tab bar. This is using just React Navigation and the native navigator. We also use a lot of recycler list view because we have lots of lists that are long and lots of images and little icons that can take a lot, like look at all these items. And that just helps with performance, it's really good. The background with the waves, SVGs, all these items in their backgrounds, also SVGs. Sometimes that can be a problem with computation performance on Android. When that happens, I just switch things over to images and then things work okay. Let's talk about the hatch animation now. I'm gonna kind of expose ourselves for being basic when it comes to animations, but uh, here we go. Use some of my gems, which were hard fought for, free to play player here. Uh, hyphens, one of our NPCs, that's a Figma dude as well. Um, confirm. All right, you know, this is a little reanimated action going on. Tap once, got a terrible pet, that's a rare. And then we have some opacity going on to kind of transition. And then every time I tap, it just changes the image. And then we'll pow, we have some triangle particles also using reanimated. 
Reanimated is a huge part of what we do for battle and in a lot of little places, which we'll show. I can't remember if these particles show on Android. There's some sometimes when I do like these small little particles, those are all small reanimated like views. It doesn't work well with performance. So sometimes I just turn things off on old devices. This is the breakdown of our greedy egg, which is kind of the same thing as our mystery egg, but a different color. And we just kind of switch between the images and at the end have these fly everywhere and translate the X and Y and it looks very cool. Well, I don't know if very cool is the right word, but kind of cool. All right, now for the fun stuff, we are gonna hop into a battle. My team's looking good. Start battle. Once again, background, icons, circle, all Figma SVGs. Now actually, the red circle you see is not in like kind of the, the targets their images, they used to be SVGs, but that was one of the ones where the performance on Android was less good, so I changed them over. And the background, that's memoized, never changes, so it was fine to be an SVG, and it looks really crisp on all device sizes because of that. But you'll notice, like, as you change your move at the bottom of the move bar, it changes what kind of targets are going on, and so we're constantly rendering and re-rendering, and that's where performance can be dicier if you have a very intricate SVG and some of the pathing on it was intricate. So an image just solved things. All right, let's cast soak. Bam. All right, we got a move firing off. You saw like this thing fly across the screen. Let's break down what's actually going on there. So when a void pet casts a skill, we show an animation using a sprite sheet, which is what you see right here. A lot of old school games use these. You might be more familiar with kind of the block grid of animations of little sprites, and you just kind of show these really quickly, and it kind of creates an animation, and you play them on loop a lot of times for idle animations. They also work for casting skills. So in our case, we just have a very long horizontal one. And if I zoom in, you can kind of see the, the particles, and as it changes, you kind of just watch the entire animation kind of play by scrolling left and right. And this is a giant image. If you look at the dimensions in the bottom right. It is 33600x400. So very long. Now to actually display this in React Native, what happens is I display an image and I have overflow hidden on it. So you only see one frame, which is about 1200 pixels, I believe. I use reanimated to translate it to the right to go this way. And if you play it fast enough, or really at the rate that you want it, you can change the frame rate. It just looks like a nice crisp animation flying across the screen. Now you may be asking, can you just render this size image and everything is okay? The answer is actually yes, as long as you're not on Android 9 or lower. If you are, problems can occur. I just disable them and we're kind of fine because not too many people have Android 9 devices or lower. Or if you do, you just play without animations and it is what it is. Also, not all of our animations are that long. For example, this one is a square animation and it's a lot shorter. It doesn't need to be horizontally going across the screen. It's just kind of a bite that goes on somebody. Now I can sit here and I can recast that move. We could watch it again. Or I can just go to auto battle and I can watch this kind of play and they can cast skills for me. And that's two different style of ways that you can play in the game. But the same thing is happening an input is automatically chosen for you, and then we play the animation across the screen. I can also speed this up if I want to. This is 2x speed, and it can really start zooming. And really all that's going on in battle is showing those sprite sheets, showing outlined text, and little images with a fade animation, and then some math going on. So we did have to do some like Arctan math or something to be able to choose the diagonal. Like this lonely needs to hit this Sag in the bottom right. And so you can see the angles a little bit different compared to if it was going all the way across. So there's a little thought put into it. And then some pets will lunge. You see how it kind of goes forward. All it is is a translation, but it's rotated translation with some math underneath the hood. All using reanimated, very nice, very cool. I used to use Skia for the uh, t outline text. I stopped for some reason, can't remember why. Switched to this Charmy Tech library. Has been working great, and the text looks crisp and stuff. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the things that we did to get kind of a game-like feeling inside of React Native app. Now to get the battle screen to work in particular, I did have to do some optimizations and some profiling using the React profiler and just seeing where all the renders were coming from to get things to work relatively smoothly on lower end Android devices. And I wouldn't even say it is perfect then, but it's a struggle for everyone, I think. So the big thing for me was I use Zustand and 
every time somebody casts a move or something, we were re-rendering a lot of things on the page. And so I just went through with the React Profiler and I was like, okay, when you cast this, these are the things that should be re-rendering and these are the things that should not. And I just did a lot of memo. One random crash we had on Android devices had to do with flipping the text. So you'll notice how the boss on the right side, he's looking the opposite direction that the pets are. So how do you get that to happen? Well, you say scale X is negative one and it flips the, the, the dude horizontally. Well, that makes the text go backwards. So what I was doing is I reflipped the text with the scale negative one on the X direction as well. On some Android devices, that will make things lag really hard and it can't handle it. Others, just fine. iOS, just fine. So we didn't catch it till production. And then I was like, okay, we just won't flip the text. Cause honestly it was kind of silly that I was doing that. But you know, when you're coding, you just put silly little stuff everywhere. But the thing that I found that has worked really, really well and is how we got our crash rate down uh, like 5% lower or whatever it was at the beginning of the week was every time somebody would crash, I would give them a dev build and I'd be using Expo and do tunneling so they can like make changes on their phone as I'm kind of like testing things and they can they can replay it and they can recreate the crash. And then I would figure out where it was coming from and we just like fix it live on the spot. So that was huge for figuring out all these random crashes because there's so many Android devices and that's pretty much it for Void Pet Dungeon. If you like strategy games, give it a try. You might like it. And if you're running into any crashes, let me know because I am trying to fix all those.